Is it possible for you to believe in Jesus Christ as your Savior but without getting too radical about it? Putting it another way, are there different kinds of Christians? Can you be a Christian by degrees, believing some things but not really becoming a fanatic? Long ago, a young man struggled with this very issue. In his youth, his sexual escapades were well known. We might have labeled him a sex addict today. According to his own admission, he was trapped, as he put it, in the swirling mist of lust that thrust him into the worldful of vice. He went to church and maintained a facade of religious respectability, but as he later reflected on his behavior, he considered his life to be an intolerable moral contradiction. The man's name? Today we know him as Saint Augustine. But, but a saint he was not in the early years of his life. Eventually, Augustine was attracted to a famous preacher who was the Bishop of Milan and listening to him, Augustine began to see himself as he really was. Eventually, he was convicted and his life changed completely. Augustine did not believe that you could be a Christian apart from bowing in submission and recognition of Jesus Christ's right to rule in your life. We call this willingness discipleship. Writing of Augustine's concept of discipleship, Richard Foster said, Augustine did not believe, as is so common today, that one could be a convert to Christ without being a disciple of Christ. For him, conversion and discipleship were two sides of the same door. Both were necessary for one to pass through the doorway. He knew that receiving Christ required a radical reordering of his life. He had counted the cost and understood that conversion meant a lifestyle without his mistress and a profession other than rhetoric which he believed taught the arts of deception. Even more, he knew that turning to Christ meant turning from the arrogance and intellectual pride that had driven him so fiercely. For Augustine, conversion was not assenting easily to a few propositions. It was restructuring his whole life. What does it mean to be a Christian today? Go to church? Watch your language? Try not to cheat? Before you answer, think about a few of these statements from the Bible. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. Then reflect on Jesus' uncompromising words to his disciples. No one can serve two masters. Either he will hit the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. As you grow in your understanding of your new life in Christ and your knowledge of the Bible, your commitment and your love relationship will affect every part of your life. But if your attitudes and behavior show no change, your faith is only theory. Again, Jesus challenged the disciples and He challenged us with a question. Why do you call me Lord and do not do the things I commanded you? The greatest single cause of atheism in the world today, wrote Brendan Manning, is Christian who acknowledge Jesus with their lips then walk out the door and deny Him by their lifestyle. That is what an unbelieving world simply finds unbelievable. Surrender of your life to Jesus Christ is not a decision to make lightly, but in Jesus' own words, if you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it, but if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul? Is anyone worth more than your soul? And in view of this, we should examine clearly of what the scripture says on how we as professing Christians should live a life worthy of our calling as Christ's disciples. Here are some of these radical passages. Put to it therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry, because of this the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways in the life you once lived, but now you must also rid yourselves of all such things as this, anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy languages from your lips. Do not lie to each other, since you have taken off your old self with its practices and have put on the new self which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of its Creator. And lastly, for the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passion and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age. 
while we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good.